Hey guys, this is Norm, and today I'm going to run y'all through a tutorial showing y'all how I put together um, one of my most popular photos that I've posted on Flickr. This was a shot that I called uh, No Turning Back, and um, this was a shot that I did on Expedition Everest at uh, Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. and one of the shots that I took from the front car as the roller coaster was uh, going down the, the first part of uh, the downward motion. And it's an okay shot. Um, nothing technically wrong with it. Um, I juiced up the colors on this shot a little bit just to enhance things and make it pop a little bit more. Uh, but really not the most exciting shot in the world. Um, I liked it a lot so I decided you know what let's do something a little bit different with it and let's um, because what's not what's missing here is that feeling of motion um, which I definitely was experiencing uh, at, at this point and through the rest of the ride so what I did was I, I pulled out a technique that I have um, haven't used in a long time but it's a fun way to, um, to add some motion to uh, your photographs um, and so let's just run through the technique that I've got. Now you'll find uh, uh, you can follow along if you've got Photoshop and you'll find that I've made available to you uh, the original image of this, this image that you see right here. You can download that uh, with this tutorial um, and you're going to find that if, if you're looking at this uh, um, off of our blog then you can just simply come to the blog and, and download it and that's going to be at uh, dailydisneyphoto.com and just do a search for uh, Expedition Everest or tutorial uh, and it should pop up with that and in that you'll find the uh, the file which you should be able to grab and you can just follow along with this tutorial so if you want to grab that now you can go ahead and pause this video and then go ahead and do that okay so we're going to assume that everybody is uh, got this loaded into Photoshop and what we're going to do next is um, we've got the got the photo in here we've got it in the background what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this so that we're going to create two copies of exactly the same thing and the way that we do that is to come over here to our layers and we're just going to simply drag that down to this icon right next to the trash can and that's going to create a duplicate so we now have two um, we have two images two layers that are exactly the same um, so now let's go ahead and start our manipulation to create that energy, that, uh, that sense of motion that I was able to create in the photo. And the way we're going to do that is a filter that uh, I haven't used in a long time, um, but it's been around pretty much forever. And we're going to come over here to Blur, then we're going to come across to... Now you would think it would be Motion Blur, but that's not the case. Motion Blur is just going to move things from uh, from left to right. Um, and what we're going to actually be doing is using the radial blur which seems kind of unintuitive and it's going to bring up this little dialog box and what we're going to do is make sure that you have it set to zoom because spin is just going to twirl it around the center point zoom is going to actually cause things to look like they're moving away from the center now there's three different levels uh, unfortunately this particular pre uh, filter will not give you a preview of what the results will look like before you hit OK so we're just going to have to kind of play with this um, as far as how much blur we want and there's three different quality modes on this for the tutorial today I'm just going to use good just because it's a little bit faster uh, but for your own work you'll probably want to use best once you've kind of figured out what the parameters should be and uh, let's just you know crank this way up and uh, take a look at what that looks like and you can see we've just completely blown this uh, all the details completely out um, that's really kind of overkill for for what we're trying to achieve so let's go back again blur uh, radial blur and let's bring it down to let's say about 40 or so and j again just hit OK and now we've got still um, we've got lots lots of energy here still as, as you can see but you can still tell what kind of even looking at this image you would know that this is this is a shot of a roller coaster 
what we're going to do now is we're going to do the magic where we blend the two together. And so now we come back over here to our layers and you can see we've got the background copy that has the uh, zoom effect on it. And if we turn that off, you can see underneath it down here, the background, that's still the normal image. So we've got two images, the zoom, and let's just go ahead actually and just rename that just to make that a little clearer as to what we've got going on. So we've got the zoom and we've got the background. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we don't want zoom everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to control it by using a layer mask. And the way we're going to do this is that we're going to select the, the zoom layer, the top layer. We're going to come over here to, to this. This is your uh, layer mask control. And what you will want to do is if you just click on it now, you'll see that you get this, but nothing happens here. So let's just undo that come over here if you're on a PC what you'll want to do is hold down uh, the alt key if you're on a Mac hold down the option key and click on this and what you'll notice is that first of all we can now see the bottom layer the top layer is completely disappeared and this layer mask that we have on top which controls what parts of, a, of an image we can actually see has completely turned black and that's what we want so now we can actually go and start painting in um, our zoom effect into the image. Now we'll, the way we're going to do that is we're going to come over here and grab our brush tool, which you can see here, and we're going to go ahead and s make sure that uh, our image is set to, our, our foreground color is set to white because we're going to be painting on this black background because we want the zoom to show through in these areas. Um, now you can you can swap these by just hitting the X key on your keyboard or you can do the same by just hitting this little um, uh, alternate arrow which switches them back and forth also. Next thing we're going to do is come up here and we're going to control the uh, amount of opacity or the amount of flow that we have. Now think of this as just a a, a spray can that we're going to be spraying white onto this black background and what we don't want to do is just to load it up with a hundred percent white to whether it's either black or white we want something that's in between and by reducing the amount of flow the amount of white that's there think of it as the amount of white that's coming out we can control that by just passing over areas more we can add more white to it um, and, and that gives us control over uh, being able to place this. Um, now we've got the, the brush size that you can see here with the circle and we have, can control that size on the keyboard with the bracket keys. The right bracket key is going to increase the size and the left one is going to decrease that. So we're going to go kind of in the middle come down just a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting around the edges the areas that I want to see blur so we'll just start kind of coming in and as you can see things are starting to blur a little bit as as we paint in paint in some of that blur and what we want to do is we want to keep this area down here sharp but we want to add blur or a maximum amount of blur kind of to the edges so we're just going to continue to paint that in there. We're going to add more to the to the foreground than the background because what we don't want is we don't want this area to be completely blurred out. And we'll just add keep stroking that in. Add some down here. And maybe bring this back a little bit more and bring our brush size down just a little bit and just add a little bit more to these areas here and we've got that alright now if you look over here at our layer mask you can see where I've painted white in and you can see that we've got shades of gray so it's not quite as dense on some areas as it is on others now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to bring some of that detail uh, back into the photograph uh, of what's 
lying underneath that. And the way that we're going to do that is with the opacity. Um, right now we've got our zoom layer selected. If we s turn that off to zero, you can see that everything just kind of disappears. You can't see that this layer at all because we've made it completely transparent. But what happens is, is if we start to turn it back on and start to bring it back up, you can start to see that zoom blur coming back in. Now what we don't want to do is come up back up to 100%. We want to leave it a little bit transparent so that you can still see through the top layer un to the details underneath. And you, again, if we if we do this and we go back to 100%, you can see that we've completely lost the detail on the side. If we bring it back down to say around 80, 75, 80 or so, um, and, and again, this is all subjective as to what feels right for you. Uh, somewhere in this neighborhood, we've got that feeling of motion all around the edges here. and But we can still see some detail in there. And that's controlled by this opacity. So that's it. Once we um, completed that step, you just export this out as the final image. And that's what I did for the uh, image that I uploaded to Flickr and for the one that you see at the, uh, the top of the post on uh, dailydisneyphoto.com. And that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, play with it with the uh, image that you've downloaded and see if you can create a similar uh, type of thing with the steps that I've taken you through. Thanks again. Have a good day.